Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll discuss my personal experience using Magic Lantern HDR, and I'll show you my workflow in Adobe After Effects. I'll mention some obvious limitations I noticed about using Magic Lantern HDR, and I'll talk about a workaround that I found to address those limitations. So basically what Magic Lantern HDR allows you to do is get great shadow and highlight detail and achieve very high contrast scenes. HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range, is very generally a technique for representing more contrast in pictures. HDR allows you to enhance the amount of information retained in bright or dark areas of a picture, and in this case video. So Magic Lantern HDR is able to compensate for this loss of detail by taking multiple pictures at different exposure levels. We take that video in post-processing and stitch them together so we get a picture that is representative in both dark and bright areas. So uh, basically this tutorial is going to focus on After Effects and Twixtor. I prefer Twixtor for frame blending, so I'm going to show you that. Some of the methods that I don't use, but others have tried and had really good luck with, are Photomatics with After Effects. I tried using Photomatics. I was getting a lot of flicker. Also using Photomatics takes a long time to process image sequences, but if you figure out how to get that to work, please let me know. You can use Ginger HDR, you can use Blender and AVI Synth. Both of those are free. You can find some good tutorials on those elsewhere on the internet. So let's get started. Basically what I do here is I hit the trash can button to bring up the Magic Lantern menu and go into movie mode, scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says HDR video, and uh, you can select 1EV, 2EV, 3EV. This is very similar to bracketing, you're basically selecting the exposure offsets. I've had great results with 3EV, also 5EV, that depends on your scene. And when you select this, it's going to cause your camera screen to flicker. That'll give you a quick idea of what the high and low exposure looks like. And once you press record, it begins capturing. Okay, first in Adobe After Effects, let's change the color depth to 16 bits per channel. Let's go ahead and drag our movie file into After Effects. You can see here this movie is 29.97 frames per second. The first thing we want to do is interpret the footage. Click Interpret Footage, Main, and let's change the frame rate to 15 frames per second. We just want to cut it in half. If you shoot at 30, change it to 15. If you shoot at 60, change it to 30. And you'll see why that's important. Drag the video to a new composition and duplicate this layer. Let's rename these files. I can see that the first frame in this movie is the dark frame. So I'm gonna name this top layer dark and rename the other layer light. First, zoom all the way in to the very first frame in the light layer. Remove the very first frame by dragging this bar over. The first frame is the dark frame, and the second frame is the light frame. Now select both layers, right click, go up to time, select time stretch, and under the stretch factor, enter 50. Uh, use all those settings there. And basically, we've made the top layer all of the dark frames, and the bottom light layer all of the light frames. Okay, double check that that's correct. Next, duplicate the dark layer. Over at Track Mat, click on that, select Luma Mat. Alright, now we already have an improved dynamic range, but there's some things we can do to improve the image. Select the duplicate dark layer, Dark 2, make it visible, and you can drag down the opacity. Press T and drag down the opacity to like 50, 55%. See if you like the way that looks. Already it looks more natural. Uh, if you've gotten this far, you're on the right track. Let's go up to Layer, select New Layer, and make an adjustment layer. Now we're going to do some color grading and some shadow highlights adjustments. Looking at the effects and presets, uh, select Shadow Highlight, and add the Shadow Highlight filter to the adjustment layer. Unselect Auto, pull down Shadow Highlight, blend with Original. This is going to allow you to tweak your shadows and highlights. And to make it look more natural, we can blend with the original. Anywhere from 50 to 70%. Uh, you can bump up the color correction a bit. 
play with these other settings, each scene is going to require slightly different settings. So take some time with uh, shadow highlights. Now some additional color grading. Um, here I use magic bullet looks, although you can achieve the same effects using other After Effects filters that come with After Effects. Of course, adjusting the curves is going to make a significant difference. Focus on the highlights and the shadows, uh, the saturation. You may also want to do a um, ranged saturation. Anyway, you guys know how to color grade much better than I do, I'm sure. So that's all you. Yeah, take a look at the sky. You can see more of the details in the sky. Those have carried over from the underexposed image. And now the black shadows are filled in with more light. So after you've done these Luma tricks and applied some color grading, we now want to smooth things out a bit. At this point, we're working at 15 frames per second. We're basically cutting the frame rate in half. So to compensate for that, uh, we can use frame blending. Go ahead and drag this composition to a new composition and we'll rename this. And here we're going to apply some very basic frame blending. The Twix store frame rate must match the frame rate of your video file. So I apply Twix store. The input frame rate is 15 frames per second. Very important. All right, and for this composition, I want the final composition to be 24 frames per second, 1080p. Here you can see it's working. It's performing some frame blending. Uh, the original input frame rate is only 15 frames per second, so it's inevitable that you're going to get some ghosting artifacts with a lot of movement. Luckily, if there's not too much movement, the artifacts are not too bad. But you can see at the end of this frame, uh, you get some very obvious ghosting. In conclusion, the major limitation to the Magic Lantern HDR is that you're sacrificing half of your frame rate. If you're using a T2i or T3i like me and you want to shoot at 1080 at 30 frames per second, you're going to end up with uh, 15 frames per second and that leads to a lot of ghosting artifacts. However, it works fine if you don't have too much movement in your scene. However, if you use 720 at 60 frames per second, it looks great. Everything, things are much smoother. You're not getting the ghosting artifacts, but you suffer some of the aliasing and uh, lower resolution of 720. Where do you imagine using HDR? In the comments, give me some feedback. I'm very new to video HDR. I think it's a cool idea, but where do we use this? Where does this come in handy? What are the types of scenes that benefit the most from these HDR images? Let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. If you like this tutorial and you like the channel, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and have fun.